Hey, Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. This is the Tiny Cox app. Yes, we're doing the preview for this round. We've got the big game, the grand final rematch, Collingwood versus Brisbane. And also, we take your fan questions. Yes, we're giving back to the community because you're the reason we are here and we love you so much. But this is going to be an awesome episode. going to be a quick one. So settle in and let's get into it. All right, welcome. I like the idea of this, a new name, the Tiny Cox app. I don't know if that's really helping us out at all, but here we are, Brayden. Welcome to the pod. Yeah, thanks, Mace. Oh, well, we <laughs> we um, fumbled around a few names, Little Cox, Small Cox, Tiny Cox, I reckon, describes I feel like we it. don't use our last name enough. No. Two Cox, one pod. You two know, Cox, a few yeah. different ideas we could have. Yeah, I like two Cox, one pod. <laughs> and we, we cram it in Some on people. this episode. We, we cram just, it in. All right, well, we'll go straight into it. We're going to talk about that grand final rematch at the end of this. Yeah. But we're going to go into the first game, North Melbourne versus Carlton over there at Marvel. Carlton's got a big drive ahead of them to get out there. It's the Good Friday appeal game, which mm. is always good to see. They raise Great the money initiative. going into it, and then normally they all roll into the Marvel Stadium and watch North Melbourne just get absolutely pumped by whoever <laughs> they're versing each year. But hopefully... They can take it up to Carlton. Maybe North Ball is going to make a little appearance up there. They've been competitive as yeah. as far as this year goes so far, but I don't know. Carlton's its own beast. Hopefully the Carlton fans roll out to Marvel Stadium. I feel like they go wherever. Carlton had a week off and just feeling real refreshed going yeah. into a good Friday game. It's going to be a tough ask for North Melbourne, I must say, but you never know in this game. You just never know. The uh the ladder's so even nowadays, and they got Clark out the helm. You know, anything is possible. Well, the ladder means absolutely nothing because around zero, we don't know who's where. Oh, well, we know where Collingwood and Brisbane are, but, <laughs> but outside of <laughs> the that. The two best teams have we, yet to win a game. We don't know where the rest are, but uh, yeah, it, it'll be good to see. I, It's all, it's, as much as everyone says, yeah, it's good to see Carlton up and about, mm. the big teams winning the games. It is true. Yeah. It is true, and we like to see them out there showing up. And they would have been walking around the last two weeks with the buy oh, just oh, be Brisbane at home, big head wobbling down Ligon Street, oh. just you know, absolutely. Ferrari winning the F one. Oh, Jeez, oh, don't they love Ligon it? Ligon Street's going nuts over the last few weeks. But oh, who do you got on this? Who are you tipping? Is it Carlton? Uh, yeah, I'll probably give it to yeah, Carlton. It'd be silly not to. I will go Carlton for both of us. Next game, we guys Frio versus Adelaide at Optus Oval at we've, West. We've had some crappy tips. We're, we've we had gone. some real question marks around Frio and Frio's, Frio's just essentially come to us and gone yeah you can get stuffed mate yeah and we said Adelaide <laughs> was going to win at home against Geelong last week which they did not yep. so I don't know I keep feeling like you got to get on a team until they give you a reason to get off them now yep. we got Frio really potent forward line at the moment mm, yep. uh, and you know the Crows coming into the season they were an exciting up and coming team now we need to see a bit more of that I think Nixie said it post game we need to just get back into that groove now can they get into the groove against Freo I'm not sure because they're pretty good defensively although they don't get out of the blocks quick yeah so you know we might see Crows get out of the blocks and then we see the big Freo resurgence nine where they got goals a, in a row last week nine, nine goals, goals in a row last Woo-wee! week and they got that potent forward run. line uh, we get to see Luke Jackson again running out there you have 54 points in a row I just did the math in my head 54 points that's in a row good. that's insane that's actually wild from Fremantle yeah <laughs> oh, well there was points night. kicked in between yeah but, but goals, still I mean goals. come on there I'm not um, gonna ruin your quick math no nah, no nah, I appreciate that <laughs> I'm still trying to get my sixes figured I know Australians, it's like natural to them, but that's yeah. so much for me. But I've got Freo winning at home versus Adelaide on this one. I've got to give it to Freo. They've given me no yep. excuse to They're say otherwise. Um, and I'm so happy for Long. He got the extension mm. going into the season. And he's yep. everyone, even when he signed the extension, everyone has given him shit. But look, Luke he's, Jackson absolutely dominated again this week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. that's, Actually, that's, that's my BOG for the uh, week. Hint. I don't want uh, Sean Darcy to come in and ruin his vibe, mm. but you know, I feel like he can play anywhere. He's an yep. absolute jet. Uh, let's jump over to the Essendon St Kilda game because there's a there's a lot of exciting, interesting games that are going to answer some questions this yep. weekend, and I reckon this is one of them. Essendon versus St Kilda. Who's good? I feel like Saints are more proven with their consistent. Pressure. They did it all last year. Essendon, yep. we didn't really know what we were going to get coming into the season. Uh, they've dished up some pretty good performances. Even the loss to Sydney by like 30-odd points mm. last weekend. They were competitive, and they were right in it. Um, and Sydney and Sydney is no, you know. Not easy at all. They're not no. an easy beat over there by any stretch of the imagination. So 
I can't give it to Essendon. I gotta no. say St Kilda, uh, but it would be good to see a close competitive game. I will say between this and the next game we're going to go into, these are the games of the round. I yeah. think St. Kilda, I've got them beating Essendon, but I'll say it's within a goal. Yeah. I reckon it'll be a really close game. This is Which one would of those, be a good result, I yeah. reckon, for Essendon. They're like, I feel like the word we're getting out of Essendon is be patient. Mm. They've given themselves an eight-year window where they can win a flag or whatever or be successful in eight years, but that might come next year but it might come in eight years. So they've given themselves a long eight runway. Eight-year window. That is a massive runway. Yeah, I know so, that's in airports over there. It's got plenty. They're putting in the new runway out there. Is that part of the plan? Yeah, so <laughs> they've given themselves a very long runway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's – I don't know. Are they in their window? They might win it this year. But, uh, yeah, mm. I don't think they're going to win this game. I give it to St. Kilda, but if Essendon can get this game, we'll, I think we'll have a lot better idea of where yep. they're at. They're thereabouts. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've got, yeah, I've got St. Kilda winning this one. We'll move to Port versus Melbourne at Adelaide Oval. This is very interesting mm. because although, you know, they're two very good teams or so it would seem at the moment, yep. I don't think we're going to get the best Melbourne going over yep. there. A few outs for Melbourne. Yeah, yeah if they, they go out and then Lever's question mark, like yeah. there's a few things going into the game. Maybe they're not as strong as they are whenever they're 100%. Yeah. That's going to be a very, very big question mark for him. Adelaide at Adelaide Oval, not an easy feat. Yeah. yeah they've got a massive crowd that shows up to every single one of their games. I, yeah, it's going to be a tough one to, to pick Melbourne over on this one. I think Port's probably going to get them on this one, and this yeah. is going to be one of those that you, uh, Melbourne maybe can afford to lose, I think, at this stage, knowing the situation they're in. I want any Port fan, if we got any Port fans that listen to mm. this podcast, give us a little pair in the chat or something because hey. I want to know if you're out there and if you exist. If I want to know who listens to this thing, if it's all Collingwood supporters <laughs> or if we got a range. I know we do have a range from our live show. Yeah. We had a lot of people show up, uh, Hawthorne supporters, which I didn't know many were out there, yeah. uh, Essendon supporters and the like, but – uh, yeah, I want to see Port fans because we are big Ken Hinckley fans. I love Ken. Uh, and I think what Port did really, really well over the offseason is trade people in to fill specific roles. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be cool to see if that's what it takes, just that little top-up to get them over the line. Because, uh, yeah, if I have a feeling that they could go really deep yeah. this year. Shout out to Soldo too. The yeah, Ruckman over there, he's absolutely killing it. So, yeah, so, I love seeing him doing his thing. Great man, yeah. uh, doing incredible things over there. So, I think that's one one position they've been able to to put someone in to make their their team stronger. Yeah, so I've got Port winning this one. Yep, definitely yeah, got the same over there. Right, we'll move on to the next one. We got Western Bulldogs versus the West Coast Eagles at Marvel. That's it. And then the next game, we've got. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there is a question. There's a talking point out of this one because team selection has yes, been this is a big, big talking mark, point. Eh? From the Bulldogs since, you know, the opening round. Because yep. they have Riley Sanders, who's the young up-and-coming star. He got subbed out in, in his first game for Caleb Daniels, who wasn't starting, who's, yep. who's also an absolute jet. And then they got uh, McRae playing in the VFL side. Yep. They got Lobb just came out for Sam Darcy. So they're shifting a lot of magnets early mm. in the season. Yep. Uh, now, they did get the win over the Suns at Ballarat. Uh, but Lobb kicked four, I think, in the VFL, VFL yep. and we've got uh, McRae, who had 47 touches, uh, 10 clearances, and he just tore them a new Safe one at VFL level. <laughs> so, but I think this is just a contextual thing because we don't know the context why he was down there because yep. he's always been a contested ball beast. He's always been able to get stoppage to stoppage and get a million touches. Mm. Is that why he's in the VFL? Yeah, I don't know. It's a question mark. It is a question mark. But with those kind of statistics, it'd be tough not to be playing him in the AFL. Mm. And if he's not playing in the AFL, it'd be tough to say he's not going to be looking elsewhere. Yeah, true. Yeah, you know I mean? Very true. And you get, if you get numbers like that, there's definitely other teams that are looking at that. I'm oh. sure his agent's working very hard. We reunite the McRae brothers. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Finn's getting a bit of a run now for us. So yeah, it's you never know see. what will happen. But I think, um, yeah, I think he'll, he'll probably get the call up this week, given those kind of numbers. Not to say that he's looking elsewhere by any means, but I think um, he's definitely proven himself in playing at a, a better level than AFL, or sorry, better level than VFL in the VFL, which usually ends up being uh, an opportunity in the AFL. Are the they going to need him to get over West Coast at Marvel Stadium, though, Mace? Who are you picking? Um, I'm going to have to go West Coast Eagles to lose by a ton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is – we're just going to go 
back over the same conversations from last year, but where yeah. we talk about the evenness in the competition and the fixturing and all of these things, but just having one team that floats around the competition that is going to get smashed week in, mm. week out and affect, you know, your percentage. If, if, if one team comes up against them twice and gets a massive percentage boost as opposed to teams that come up against West Coast once, it's going to skew the whole competition. Yeah, and it's, it's not something that you want. So you want to see them get as competitive as possible, as quick as possible, but they still seem a fair way off it. And Oscar Allen injured. Injured, yeah. Knee injury oh, out no, indefinitely. That <laughs> top player goes down. You're like, fourth, geez, not again. They've this, had a we can't have run. this happen again, can we? They've had an absolute horror run with yeah. injuries and to all their stars. It's always their stars. <laughs> we'll, we'll, keep, try to, we'll be on Reed Watch, Harley Reed Watch. We're yeah. always on that every single week and we're hoping he goes really well. And, um, Obviously, a lot of pressure on him being the number one draft pick, but we got uh, we're on his side, you know. We hope he's uh, he's doing incredible things over there. So we'll keep out an eye out for him and how he goes. But we'll move into the next game: Richmond versus Sydney at the MCG. Now, Sydney has been able to prove themselves at the MCG mm. this year. Now, a lot of question marks uh, in previous years of whether or not they play better, at, you know, or play all right at the MCG Smaller and if they can hold up. On yeah, the SCG. they got very different ground size, and um, so far by the. Uh, the opportunities they've had at the MCG, they've made the most of them. So who do you got in this one, Richmond versus Sydney? I've got Sydney just tearing through this year. I don't want to say they're going to win the flag. It's obviously early in the mm. season. The scary thing is every one of their players can run. They've all got a tank. Yeah, They've all got crazy kicks on them. Yep. So they can just go one end to the other so fast. You think of just their midfield, like all the way across. They've got McInerney. They've got Haywood. They've got Errol Goulden. They've got, like, you, you've, Heaney's gone into the middle and just stepped it right up. So they've got all these, like, flashy outside great, like, kicks. Yeah. And then once, you know, the likes of, like, Mills and Parker and Adams comes back in, if they can squeeze back into the side, yeah, they're just going to be giving them the ball on the outside and say, here, do whatever you want with it. Because at the moment, you know, they've just got to get on top of that, the clearance side of things. Yeah. But at the moment, they're just winning it back through their pressure and then they just tear teams up, kicking it through the guts. And yeah, they're, they're just a scary team. And they're starting to put two and two together up the front as well. They got the Fords coming out under Buddy's shadow. Marty uh, party. The Amarty party. Uh -huh. uh, they got uh, Big Hados down there. Yep. Um, yeah. They're, yeah, they're a scary, scary proposition for anyone. Oh, for sure. I think they're going to win this one uh, quite convincingly over there at the MCG. And so. Like I said, it's going to be tough to to beat Sydney this year. I think um, they're going to get a lot of wins on the board. And Errol they're going Golden, to be, man, and stop they, it. You look at their list, and it's like, man, there's gun after gun after yeah. gun. You're wondering how you can fit them all in one team. The but Lizard? They're doing it. The Lizard. Running one of the off favorite, Man, one of my favorite players. I couldn't lizard. name a bad the player. The Lizard. The Lizard. Tommy Papley, kick four? Casually. Oh, man, <laughs> stop. Uh, unreal. But we both got Sydney in that game. We'll go to Hawthorne versus Geelong at the MCG Monday game. Yeah, I love mm. this one. I always love this one. I wish it was as competitive as the Kennet Curse days. Yeah. Uh, but, like, now it's like the Kennet Curse is it's dead, but, like, Geelong is still going <laughs> to smash Hawthorne. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I, oh God. It's going to be one big celebration for Tomahawk. Yeah. 350 <laughs> games. He's going to have a big party at the MCG, and I think he's going to kick at least five or six. They're going to be yeah. just – feeding him the ball. Against the old right rival, center. yeah. If they can get out to a nice, comfortable lead, I feel yeah. like they're the type of team that looks after each other and goes oh, like, yeah. let's make sure Tomahawk's having a good day. If Done there's a person that the kicked club. 10 this week, it's Tomahawk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially because I feel like Jez Cameron will just be super selfless and be like, <laughs> I'm giving them all to Tomahawk. <laughs> he'll, run, he'll run all the way to the goal square and be looking around yeah. waiting for him to come up. Oh. Tomahawk's still in the center square rolling back. He's like, I'll wait, I'll wait. <laughs> Met a lot of good blokes in footy over my time. Jez Cameron. Oh, he's one of the biggest legends, though. One of the all times. Yeah. Right? We spoke about Travis Clark last week. Mm. Oh, anytime I can crowbar that man into the podcast, <laughs> I get it in there. We've got two teams with no wins coming up against each other. Yep. It's hard to sell this one, really. Uh, but Brisbane versus Collingwood up at the Gabba. Yep. Uh, two teams, two battlers just trying to get a win on the board. Yep. Uh, grand final rematch. I think they played in that last year. Was that only yeah, last, I think year? It was last year? Wasn't it? Uh, yeah, last year, was Yeah, Brisbane yeah. have Dude back, maybe, <laughs> apparently. Yep. Uh, he's an absolute gun, uh, according to Harrow on the decks, big Brisbane fan, mm. uh, coming back after his ACL injury. So that's something that you love to see. Uh, and who gets, 
Who gets the zero rub, rubbed off their name? Yeah. Well, we don't have to get tips from this one because we know it's going to be Collingwood, mate. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Going to go mean, up there and I do don't the think impossible. I feel comfortable probably putting my opinion on to this one. I think it's always going to be the same every week, Braden. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a big game up there at the Gabba. Yeah, uh, obviously neither one of us. It's uh, I think one of the first times in history I want to say that yeah. both teams that played in the grand final haven't won a great. game within uh, the third round. And the weird thing is the same thing's going on in the NRL too. Oh, Someone really? told me this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said the NRL has had the same issue. So, great to be part of history, mate. Yeah, uh, no, not this, not in this case, mate. But uh, yeah, it'd be an awesome opportunity for us to go up there as a team, uh, be able to hopefully you know prove ourselves over there at the Gabba and get a win up there. I just had a thought, but then I don't know if I bring it up because you talking about stadiums doesn't end well, but. Mm. Heard a lot of trash talked about the Gabba, how it's dilapidated and they're going to rip it down before the Olympics starts and all this yeah. crap. Do you like the Gabba? I've been out on the playing surface. Look, playing surface-wise, it's my, I love it. My biggest issue with the Gabba, yeah. you walk into it and you walk down to the rooms, there's a big red sign. As soon as you walk in and it says clearance six oh. and a half feet. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm six foot 11 and that's, yeah. and I do my math, six inches taller than what the actual clearance is underneath. So my neck is sore as soon as I walk into that place. I don't know who built it. Yeah. I don't know what it was, you know, part of the Oompa Loompa gang or something like that. <laughs> is this but a stadium for ants? figure this out, Gabba. Figure it out. Take some pipes out and put them somewhere else. Yeah. Give us a bit of headroom and let's walk around without having to look sideways walking out of the place. Sam Landsberger was saying that uh, there's parts of the stadium that aren't up to code. Oh, I can um, see that. And there's parts like uh, disability seating, so the, the mm. um, isn't isn't up to spec. Uh, so they're looking to rip it down. But like, it's gonna be interesting what they do because the Olympics is coming there, and I think like what six or eight years. Yeah, uh, well, and they're gonna like have that... to have a you know a major sporting stadium that's gonna be up there in Brisbane to showcase all the different sports going on. Sounds so, like they just want to cut some corners and just you know put a fresh coat of paint on it and say yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I don't Build know a if new you know, but the Olympics are kind of a big deal. You can't yeah. do that. So yeah, it's if, gonna be interesting how that pans out. If you wanted them. Yeah, if you want it, ship them down to Melbourne. I mean, we Mate, you put it at the MCG. I we think just canceled the Commonwealth Games, so we can't. Yeah, really we cancel them so we could have something bigger. Yeah, right, true. We bigger. make room. The rumor happens here. Uh, but let's get into it. Uh, we got our fan questions. This is one of our favorite parts, eh? People I just love get this. the little little say on the podcast. I love it because right? one, we don't have to do as much work. They send <laughs> us in the questions. <laughs> yeah. Two, I just love answering the questions. Uh, now, most some, of the some time, interesting that, ones that get thrown our way. They're not directed at me, but I get to ask. Them, so I feel special. Let's out. jump into some footy questions off the top and then we go yeah. general life questions and we go dating questions. And that's oh. when things spice up a bit, mate. <laughs> Last week I mentioned the, the bird shit on my head. Yep. Uh, the actual bird. The, bit the, of extra gel in the hair. Yep. Yeah, it was it was brown. I was telling Harrow. Still waiting for the DM from the girl. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, first funny question. How would you have handled the streaker from last week? Say there's a streaker up there at the Gabba. Mm. They come running right at the big mace. Now we've heard what you said allegedly <laughs> that you might do. We yep. want specifics. Well, I think after this week, knowing that there's a $10,000 10, fine on the other end of it, I might have to change my answer. Um, I don't know that I would full tackle him now. Um, I might just, you know, pull the jersey, hold him up, have him have the running man feet just going underneath them and then just hand him over to the security. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's against AFL laws or not, but uh or maybe just a trip, maybe just a they can't you know, trip them, mate. Jeez, out, right? there's you know, ten grand. That's gone. Uh, I feel like it's if gonna... I get ten grand fine for tripping a streaker, I'm gonna be just in absolute awe. I feel like there's gonna be streakers running out there and there's gonna be players running away from streakers. And we're going to try not to get fine. It's like that Benny Hill music as everyone <laughs> runs around the stadium. Oh, the Scooby Doo, how they're running yes, in one door yes. and out the other door. Well, let's, anyway. just hope, let's just hope the security there is athletic this week. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, they're limbered up. I hope he's limbered done his up. yoga like I suggested last week. We got mm. O League. That's from O League 23. Uh, this one, this yep. one was sent in by a lot of people. We got a yeah. lot of John Noble love. When are we going to see yes. John Noble running? John around? Noble's birthday this Monday it was. So we what always a- say John Noble's got an incredible birthday. We keep celebrating. It was Actually, his birthday on Monday, so Actually shout out to the note. Uh, yeah, he's been playing really well in the VFL. Another um, big game in the I VFL. I don't make decisions as far as selection, so apologies. I can't really 100% answer this question. Get in there. Uh, Get in I know there's a lot of love for John Noble, and we have a lot of love for John Noble here on the podcast. But, um, yeah, I've got no idea. Um, he is playing really well, and he's doing his uh, his job in the VFL, and it's you know up to selection to be able to, to decide where his fate lands. Uh, but he's doing everything in his power to be able to try to play AFL. So it's a, it's a credit to him. Uh, and the way he's gone about it, uh, obviously not an ideal situation to be in. I've been there many times in my career, and it's it's a tough pill to swallow. 
uh, having to play in the twos, but um, he's mm-hmm. doing everything he can to try to get to the AFL level again. He's having some good games down mm. there in the VFL. Now, this from from Black 42 How do you handle everything personally mm. when the team's going pretty shit? Um, you turn off social media. Yep. I've deleted Twitter. Uh, I've deleted TikTok. Um, uh, yeah, I just... Uh, you TikTok's kind of, vile. TikTok's, yeah. You, you get to that point where you just kind of realize, you know, what brings you positive and what brings you negative energy in life. And you try to just cut off all the negative stuff and then you only focus on the positive. I haven't and, deleted um, my number though. No, I haven't deleted your number. I've um, I've restricted it, I think, but I think I haven't blocked it yet. Um, But no, you you kind of, you look to your inner circle of friends that bring you happiness. You find the things that fill your cup. um, You focus on those and you really try to block out as much noise as possible. I know there's a lot of things that are being said and I come into the studio sometimes and you tell me stories that are being said because I've got no idea because I've completely (laughs) said I did not pay attention to any of the media this week because it wasn't healthy for me. So yeah. There's things that you do to look after your own mental health. Uh, there's things you do to make sure that you're in a positive attitude going into the club. You're not, you know, stressing about things that are out of your control. Um, and I think that's one of the things we try to do is we try to stay level throughout the season. We talk about not being on the roller coaster, the ups and downs, and everything else. So, um, yes, we hope to be in a better position than we are right now. Yeah, but um, you know, we want to stick to the process and uh, have faith that things will work itself out. Is there a player out there that you admire? Is there someone that you look at them? I'm, I'm guessing it's probably in the ruck sphere. Mm. Is it a bit of Polly Farmer? Do you ever look back at Polly Farmer's old film reels yeah. and say, that's the guy? That's or the guy. Sam Newman, you go back and check his old 300-game resume? I probably would not say Sam Newman. <laughs> there was some of the stuff he said recently, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, no, uh, there's, there's people you admire, I think, in the way they go about it um, and the way they handle media and stuff. Obviously, Darcy Moore is what everyone kind of looks at as the the perfect person, right? The perfect role model. And I will say he is the perfect role model for a lot of people. Mm. Uh, Brody Grundy, good friend of mine, obviously, too. Um, there's other people that I think they're a part of. Phil Davis was someone, I, you know, I, I still stay in contact now. He's a very intelligent human being. Uh, Stephen Coniglio, another very intelligent human who's been through it and had that all Amazon stuff and very mm. public about his situation and the way he's kind of worked through that, you definitely idolize and you say, you know, it's a credit to him what he's been able to get through. There's there's those kind of players I think you think of right away. Um, there's definitely a lot of guys in the league that you look at um, and you play against and stuff like that. And obviously they are opposition, but whenever you're off the field, you see how they do uh, their media and how they represent themselves and different things they do off it. And you, you just kind of take a leaf out of the book and go, oh, that's pretty cool what he's doing. I wonder if I can kind of somehow put that into my life. So... Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people that come to mind, but I think those are the ones that you look at and you say, wow, they're, they're pretty intelligent in the way they go about it. And uh, it's a credit to them and their professionalism mm. to be still where they're at. Yeah. Do you reckon the ruck craft mm. has changed so much over time that it's hard to go back and kind of take anything away from previous rucks? Uh, what do you mean? Like, so like, would you go back and look at like a Dean Cox's game from yeah. like the early 2000s? and go like, oh, I could take this and that? Or has it evolved so much over time? Or is the ruck still the same as it was 20 years <laughs> ago? I think there ago? is much gray area in the ruck contest as there ever has been now. Mm. I 100% think that. I mean, I, I think if you look at any center bounce and there's a, a free kick given, you look at eight players that probably look at each other and go, whose free kick is it? And then once the umpire points one way, everyone just sprints that way. It's like no one really 100% knows what's going on. I feel like the ruck is just... Complete, like I think I. I've never met an umpire that played rock. I think I'll I heard that. Dill Buckley <laughs> talk about it, where it's like the rock is just different. They're playing a different game to yeah. everyone else out yeah. there. Yeah, it's. Very, I mean, it's a one v one kind of situation. You go against someone else. The free kicks that you would get if you weren't in a rock contest, mm. you would get all the time. But because you're wrestling and throwing each other and everything else, like it's just depending on the umpire whether or not he wants to call it on the day. Yeah, you can sit there and look at some people, and it's like. If you were to do that in a marking contest, oh my gosh, it'd be the easiest free kick you could possibly yeah. call. But because it's a throw-in, all of a sudden we just allow it. Yeah. It's the weirdest concept I still don't understand to today. Yeah. Um, and it's it's getting to the point where I think whenever I first came into this situation of being a ruckman, I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. Why is he getting away with this? And it became the understanding of what can I get away with yeah. rather than sometimes in what, you know, like especially when you're learning the game, it's like what can I get away with rather than, um, you know, how can I handle this situation? Uh, because you realize that there's so much as a ruckman that little things you can do uh, that probably should be a free kick and uh, that a lot of ruckmen get away with. Yeah, not like, my, not me personally. Yeah, I try yeah. to be as you know, yeah, straight yeah. down the line as possible. But I can name every single ruckman in the league and what they do illegally that they get away with. Well, I think like if you were to t- 
take the arm chop as an example. If a midfielder goes for any mark above their head and gets their yep. arm chopped, instant free kick. Yeah. But Ruckman does it. There's no Real chance. Real discrimination, <laughs> discrimination with height. Because I feel like it's unfair because they go like, I remember Geelong early in your career, you did get paid like five free kicks in one yeah. game because people again. figured out <laughs> like if you're seven foot, if you put your arms up, Pretty no hard. one can spoil that. Yeah. So they're like, for the good of the game, we can't call arm chops. Yeah. <laughs> like, like arm chops and like like pushing people under the ball. Yeah. The taller you get, the less of those calls you get. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a weird, it's a weird dynamic, but that's just footy. Anyway, we'll What's get next? into the general questions now. What made you keep going when you wanted to give up? Uh, in footy, in general. Yeah, in footy, um, they angled it towards footy for you, and then life in general for me. Love that. <laughs> I want to um, give up all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I think like obviously we all go in waves of, um, I guess, encouragement from friends and, you know, I guess um, motivation to want to do things. Mm. Um, I would love to say that every single day I've walked into the club, I've been in 100% energy. Mm. That'd be an absolute lie. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's be honest. No yeah. one is like that 24-7. No. Um, but I think you have to remind yourself, and one thing that I, I try to consistently do is just, um, you know, remind myself of the impact you, you can have on other people, like seeing kids at training sessions and seeing them get so hyped up to see you and stuff like that is awesome. And that gives me a lot of energy to show that you kind of are a role model for other kids out there and, and be able to give them a bit of hope and, you know, maybe an opportunity to say, I can be like that one day, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, and I think the other thing is just to remind myself just kind of how far you've come from where, you, whenever you first came here and I'm never seeing a football and everything else to the experiences I have now, I'm, I'm so fortunate with what I've been able to do and what I'm still doing and the the things that come with it. Like you talk about the F1 over the weekend, like things like that that I never thought my life I would ever be able to experience. Now I look at it, those are awesome times. I'm like, man, this is amazing. Like never in my life do I think I would be able to get here. So those those kind of humbling moments are, are things that kind of get me through the tough times, just trying to remind myself that those things do happen. And there's a lot of positivity that is going on in my life. And I've got an amazing family and friends that support me. So I think those are the things I consistently try to look at. Yeah. It's a hard one because you don't over you don't overanalyze it. Mm. You don't want to overanalyze. No, you don't want to just keep digging that hole. <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah. No, I yeah. I feel like you kind of just have to keep going because you can't just give up. You can't just wallow. Yeah. yeah. I it's, You'd be more upset with yourself after you gave up than yeah. if you just grind through it. Yeah. I yeah, I definitely like the thing of like you're 100% going to fail at something if you give up. Yeah. But at least if you have a crack, there's a chance that you could succeed. Yeah. Um, that would be my little tidbit. But uh, how do you get through engineering? That's from Alistair Mitchell. Oh. Now, I don't know if that's – I think that's for <laughs> I you. I think that's me, I think. <laughs> um, I wish I could say the 100% truth here, but I think I might get my uh, my diploma taken from me if I did. Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of sleepless nights. Is um, it hard being an it engineer? It is so hard, man. Like it's all about – you know, one thing I will say is a bit of advice, right, is – um, as an engineer, whenever I was going through my interview process to see if I can get a job, one of the things they valued almost sometimes, not not as much, but it was definitely a part of it, was your people skills mm. and your ability to talk to people and you know, the things you did outside of education. So like whether you're involved in netball clubs or societies and stuff like that, uh, people really valued that just to say like, you know, on a Monday morning, whenever you come into a job, you never want to be going to your like, co-worker and go, what'd you do over the weekend? They go, oh, just, you know, just watch TV. Mm, it's like, yeah. no, you want to have a story to tell. You want some energy that's brought into the office. You want someone that can sit there and be, you know, bringing the energy up rather than bringing it down. So yeah. I think that's one of those things that as a, not only you need the education side of things, you have to work really hard and that's what engineering teaches you. Um, I think about my work, work ethic and everything else and how much of that came from having to struggle through engineering to try to get that degree. Um, and I was doing, you know, two or three nights a week, I was doing sleepless nights. So it was, uh, cause I had to juggle basketball and obviously the, this, uh, education side of it. So it wasn't easy, but, um, yeah, I think just try to make as many friends as you can that can help you out with studying all that. And then that also will help you out as far as the, uh, the interview process to show a bit of personality that, you know, people are interested in. In a couple of words, what was your, uh, study technique? Were you a crammer or were you a, did you have a good memory? Did you? I was, I made the most impeccable cheat sheets you yeah. could possibly think of. So if it was an open book exam, oh my gosh, that book had that many notes in it. And they were like scribbled in the tiniest of text to get everything. I had every single problem that I could possibly come onto the test was written in the book. Yeah. So as soon as I got to that, that problem, I saw it, I memorized it. I was like, that's on page 39. I can flip straight to that. I know exactly how to figure out this problem. Smart. So yeah, so it was it was a bit of cramming as far as a 
text size, right? Cramming in. But um, I think, you know, the most, sorry, the more you can prepare for things like that, the better you'll do. Uh, preparation is key, as I say. And what happened to your arms? Because people are, people are starting well, to notice. I've got a black eye this week too. So people are starting to notice one. that so you've got, got this and scratches, scratches here. and stuff every week. Yeah. They're saying it's almost every week. What yeah, happens to like your arms? I had three or four tackles on the weekend, so that's what happens to me. No, um, no, this is from rock contests, yeah. So you talk about the things you can get away with and everything else. Um, you can rip people in the face, and that's where I wear the glasses, and I've that's got the deep. black eye, Those and scars. I've got scrapes on my face from people ripping at me over the weekend. Um but yeah, these will be scars here. This is just from rock contests throughout the week. And um, someone had long just nails. Deal with it. Yeah, some rock men do. You find out pretty quick. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's just part of it. Like, unfortunately, that's uh, I'm amazed that the people are, are you know, looking into the detail that oh, much man. of what's going on. Come in, just really like, covered just in lashes. They thought it was zooming in on the phone. They thought it was fly with the nine tails just whipping <laughs> you up for another whatever you did. Whatever you did, it would have been your fault. Are you planning another live podcast? Both of those are from Kendall. Man, we'd love to. I know I've seen a lot of other people doing them at the moment. The biggest thing is probably a lot of people do the live podcasts around um, games and like gather around yeah. and things like that. But unfortunately, the situation that I'm in right now, can't really do that. Fortunately. So yeah, well, fortunately, yeah. <laughs> fortunately, unfortunately. So um, yeah, we, we don't have anything planned at the moment. We did do the uh, Beyond the Valley live podcast. That's that was done. awesome. That was a really cool experience. First time for us doing that. Um, we'd love to, but we probably just need to make sure that if we were to do one, we would be able to sell enough tickets. So I don't know. Yeah. We'd have to really, I don't know how we do that, but we'd love to do another live show. It'd be pretty fun. I, I love the uh, the one down in uh, the Golden Plains at BTV. Yeah, wherever. That was really good fun. Yeah. So shout out to everyone that showed up and uh, just hold your horses on that one. We'll get back we'll get to you. There. I think we'll get there. We'll get there. This one from Marion Duffy. What's the most underrated state in the US? That's a quick one. Can't say uh, Texas. We'll go Utah. Yeah, okay. Utah. Yeah. Oh, Mountainous. Scenery Grand Canyon, and stuff. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. Pretty nice. Kind of rolls through there. Yeah, underrated. Like underrated. it can't be, you can't say like New York. Yeah. No, nah, New York's then. New it's York's rated. overrated. Yeah. Uh, overrated. It, our, our argument is just rated. It's rated. I don't think it's overrated. It's rated. Uh, we'll go Utah. All right, let's get into the dating advice because yeah. this this is- This is where you shine. This is where it gets, <laughs> woo, it gets a bit hot in the yeah. studio. Uh, Sweating. First it's of all, out. Jay yep. Torp, uh, these- See, what I was realizing that I was cutting people's names in half. So yeah. the name's probably not Jay Torpa, but it might be. That's Jay. Uh, we'll Jay. go with Jay. Uh, can you run a dating event? What, like a speed dating event? Yeah, just like a Maybe it's like, you know how everyone's starting those fun run club things? Yeah. What if you just Mate, couldn't be enough. fucked running? I'll say, I'll give a shout out here. There's a new app one of my friends is running called Hump Day. Check it out. It's uh, it's on the app. So now, yeah, so it's, you get the what hinge. What are you doing that <laughs> <laughs> it's like a meetup. I think they do it every Wednesday. They have a big meetup of like all singles and stuff. No, Braden. Jeez, this is the classy establishment, mate. <laughs> it's the classy a hump establishment. Day. Yeah, Wednesday's hump day, mate. Uh, so they have an event every Wednesday. Oh, oh good. Oh, <laughs> you sick bastard. I was looking for the other app. I think from here down, I'll stop mentioning names just yes, in case okay. they want some anonymity. Yep. Uh, so I'll stop mentioning names, but you know your questions. Mm. Uh, how do you push <laughs> nerves away? when you're trying to make a move like obviously it's a nerve-wracking experience to go yep. up and ask uh someone for their number or something how do mm. you how do you push the nerves away what's some nerve tactics nerve tactics i always um i always think like the likelihood of me probably running into them ever again is very slim that's a good call that's and i'm like who really cares at yeah. the end of the day you might as well do it and if you stuff up and fumble your words or like look like an idiot yeah. it's like you know what you do you just leave the establishment and just go to the next one yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> i think that's always the thing hey when you're like interstate or whatever yeah you always just walk around with a like a, a higher sense of self-confidence because you're like, I'll never see these people again. Yeah. I'm not from here. And it always works. You're always like yeah. chatting up people and you're in circles that you don't normally mingle with and you're having a blast. If you can treat your home like state or city. Yeah. yeah. The same as, as if you, you were in like interstate or yeah, internationally. You'd be yeah. laughing. I think confidence is key. Is the thing confidence, like, absolutely 100%. key. Uh, I'm not sure if that helps with the nerves, but- and then for everything else, there's alcohol. In in a in a nice, in a nice am, amount, confined amount that gets you home at night. Real okay. safe, yes, good. Safe. Don't drive. We're promoting and just look good, after good yourself out here. there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm 21, and no guy has shown interest in me. Mm. How do I get out there if I don't like dating apps? That's a good one. Um, I think getting out there is like. You go do social things with people, right? Yeah. 
Um, I'll talk about whenever I first moved here. I didn't know anyone. Like I had to go out and I, I went to random things. You know, I would go to the night noodle mar- or the night markets at Queen Vic and stuff yeah. and just talk to random people or say hi to people or bring a little crew and get the potato there's, on there's the I think There's like a an app called like Meetup, which has a bunch of organizations yep. you can do stuff with. Join like a netball club or something like yeah. that, you know? Just kind of get to the point where you can be in a social environment. And I yep. think whenever you're in that, you'll start making friends. It's definitely put yourself in a social environment. Mm-hmm. If, you, if, you're, if you're trying to look for things, you don't like dating apps, yeah. uh, which everything's moving towards dating apps. So you should probably try and get comfortable with dating apps for starters. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I definitely get there's a massive portion of people that don't like the dating apps, you have to be willing to put yourself into those social situations yeah. where it's sporting clubs. Sporting clubs are massive. They're great. It's a great social thing. I think, you, you, I know some people get like, you know, I'm, I'm stressed because my friends are meeting people and all this kind of stuff. Where do I meet them? And like, if you never put yourself in the scenario of what you want, mm. so if you want to meet someone out, you have to be out. Yeah. You can't just be sitting at home. So yeah. like, and sometimes that's hard to like sit there and go, oh, I'm gonna, I have to put myself out there and go do these things with people and like go to events and stuff like that. But um, I think that's the first step. And yep. then you start meeting other people and you vibe with people and then you kind of, you, you tear down your ego and say, look, uh, maybe I just moved here. I'm trying to find friends, you know, is there anything that y'all are doing next week? I would love to catch up again, whoever it may be. And then you start making friends in that scenario. Get out to those like the art sip classes, have a couple of sips paint and, and paint and, and sip. Sips. You're painting and you're um, sipping. And you're... Can I bring this up while you're talking about dating apps? You sent me a photo this week Yeah, you of were. a woman's, uh, Bumble account, is that correct? Yeah, it was her profile, and yep. in her profile was a picture of you and her. Mm. Now, in my profile, there's a picture of me and you, Yeah, and we didn't bond over this shared picture. She didn't like you back. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Not to throw shade on anyone, but I don't, I just put it to you to be like, how do you know this person? Mm. What is this going on here? No idea. There but there's a massive chance that I'm not swiping your right if I see a big picture of Mason Cox well, in your profile. I want to tell this story. Because it could be it, hurting me. When you it. sent me that message, right, I was thinking something of the podcast has come up. I need to look at this, right? So I'm yeah. sitting in the box at the F1. I'm talking to, you know, <laughs> let's say it's a big wig of some sort, right? Yes. And I get this message from Braden. I go, oh, I should probably, you know, check this real quick, make sure there's no issues. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the first thing that comes up is a Bumble video. And I couldn't have just swiped away from that thing quicker in uh, my life. And I'm sitting there, I was like, what the hell is that about? And then I kind of like, you know, and the next thing I go and I go check and I was like, what is he talking about, blah, blah, blah. And then someone starts talking to me. So I locked my phone. Yeah. And then oh, the I started talking to someone else up. and I opened it up and the damn <laughs> the same photo showed up. And I was like, Brayden, just, ah, why are you doing this to me? This That's is not the place of time. That's not good for you. It's like, what is, <laughs> so is this guy swiping on Bumble is that in the middle of the Australian and Grand and Prix? Got like, photos of them? No, but uh, I think I do that often where yeah. I'll be on the dating apps swiping and then I'll go, oh, I need to go get some chocolate or something from Coles. I'll go to Coles. And mm. when I go to pay, I open up my app and there's like thing and I'm trying to tap it and it's anyway. Yeah. It's a shambles. Uh, uh, move on to the next one. Long, uh, long so long. this one is a very good one from Jessica. How long yeah. is too long to stay in the talking stage? I'd say if you haven't had this conversation six months in, it's probably an issue. <laughs> Is that, <laughs> yeah, is, that, is that okay? Is well, that, during I'm COVID, going conservative here. <laughs> during COVID, there was like the talking stages were forced very long. Yeah. I hate talking, mm. but I am not great for this advice because I try is to this go the, the what are we conversation. No, no, like just talking in general. Like, you know, you're back and forth on the app or you're messaging, messaging, oh, messaging. Yeah, How, okay. when do we meet up? We talk for a week, we talk for two weeks. Come on, let's get on a date. Because yeah. you might get on the date and you might be like, I actually hate this person. <laughs> so my thing though is like get through it quick, go, hey, how's it going? How's your day been? Oh, yeah, ha, 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 blah, blah, blah. Do you want to catch up for a coffee sometime or a drink? Yeah. Most of the time that's too quick and people say really? they just disappear yeah, into okay. the ether. So oh, I'm out the there point. trying to get into some dates. Let's go. <laughs> get through. I want to see, catch up for a date because yeah. I can hate messaging, mate. Yeah, so yeah, much. I hate favorite. messaging. I'll phone call people right So away. there's nothing wrong with go out, grab a drink, grab two drinks, grab a coffee, whatever. Yeah. Get a vibe of a person in person because that's yeah. what they're really the like. The quick date, the coffee, quick date. not the full date. And dinner. then date two is like the real date. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. You do the coffee date, which is the initial meet you, see how you're going, yeah. do I like you, do we vibe, so you don't have to commit to too much. Yeah. Might be 30 minutes, might be an hour. You always have somewhere to go after, you know, you always something to do, you got to get to. Um, And then if it goes well, you just extend it. Say, I'll just, I'll cancel the plans. Yeah. But yeah, in answer to your question, I would say I don't want to be chatting to you for longer than a week. Yep. 
I concur on that one. Uh, last one. We go into this one. Uh, how do I convert my Carlton boyfriend into a Collingwood boyfriend? Um, shoot him, bury him, put a Collingwood jumper on him. He has no choice. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, that's so about it. That's great advice. Because I don't it? think it's going to happen. So it's like, I don't oh, know. There's, death is the only option. <laughs> <laughs> Till death do us part. I don't know how you ended up oh, getting together. That's, yeah. that's blasphemy. That's Romeo that's a, and Juliet it's stuff. It's a real awkward day at least twice of the year, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not good. That's not uh, good. I don't know. You got yourself into that one, Julia, so uh, not my fault. Well, but you've had it over luck. him for years now. Mm, so yeah, yeah. There's some pains coming back your way. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I can't really give you too much on that one. Good luck. That's all, I, all, that's right, all let's I'll say. wrap it up, uh, mate. We'll wrap it up. That is the preview to round four. Are we in now? Round four, I want to say. Round sure. three and a half, yeah. we'll call it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is the preview to the round. And then also, we love the footy question. So, a massive thank you to everyone that just, uh, sent a question in for us. Uh, we will do this weekly. So, we're going to give back to the community a bit more. We want to make sure that everyone out there is uh, having their say. So make sure next time you see it on the social media, you get on and we're going to maybe answer your question. We'll bring it up on the podcast. So, so check it out. But that is it from us today. Uh, hopefully we get the win over the weekend and we'll be back on your airways on Tuesday morning. You. That's it. Peace.